The faith, grace, love connection is righteousness. Whoa, good morning, everybody. Merry Christmas, day three. Feliz Navidad. Ha, there's some international languages right there, buddy. That's what I'm saying. Praise God. Look at the background. See what we got here. This is what my boss had given me. That's what my supervisor, socks, barbecue sauce, ammo, hot sauce, magazines. And that gift was given out on Christmas Day to a, a person that needed to have a blessing. Of course, the Christmas candle is going, goes on every time we have this. Christmas goes all year around. And just keep in mind, I've got Die Hard up there because that is a, Christ, a Christmas movie. Christmas movie, Die Hard 1 and 2. Die Hard 1 and 2. Today, we're going to, we're squeezing in another point about Christmas with Isaiah 9, 6, Isaiah 7, 14, Matthew 1, 23, and Matthew 1, uh, 21. And uh, so we're going to look at that because there's another message in this message about Christmas. We're basically hitting the significant points about Jesus being born. This is Christmas week. We're taking the week to know about Christmas and understand the verses given to us. And then we'll get back to the question about Noah. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. And did I say I was excited? I hope you know that I'm excited. Yes, I love y'all. Uh, remember, this channel is about faith, food, and firearms. Faith, food, and firearms. That's life, baby. Faith, food, and firearms. Yeah. So let's look at Isaiah 9, 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Glory to God. Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Matthew 1, 23. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted God with us. Matthew 1, 21. And she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus, Yeshua, for he shall save his people from their sins or offense. What is, pe people get turned off when you say, Jesus will save you of your sins. Jesus will save you of your sins. People don't respond to that. They, Jesus will change your life from unrighteousness to righteousness. What is the only sin is turning away from righteousness. All sin is unrighteousness. This whole thing started in the Garden of Eden when Adam turned his ears to another voice. The voice was walking in the garden and said, Adam, where are you? Adam turned his listening, his ears, his heart, his actions to put into action, words to put into action of another one other than the voice, and that was unrighteousness. And this whole thing has become the difference of righteousness and unrighteousness. That's why Jesus makes you his righteousness when you become born again. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Okay? The kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. He says, seek first the kingdom of God, which is my righteousness. So righteousness and unrighteousness is the key. So when he says, when he says, when he says their offense or sins, their offense, what is the offense? It's living a life of unrighteousness. Amen. So he shall save his people from their unrighteousness, bring them into his kingdom of righteousness. Unrighteousness, they're going to save you from your unrighteousness, your separation from God, his voice, his words, 
His kingdom, His ways, His thinking, His being, His doing. That's what this is about. So the offense is on righteousness. What is repentance? We cover that when we're looking at what Noah was. You know, he was a herald of righteousness. Well, repentance, repentance is very simple. You stop following the words of the world and you start following the words of the king. Repentance. Don't make it so super religious that people don't want to know what it is and they should know what it is because it's simple. Keep it simple. You add the last S to that. Let's look at this, at these verses uh, and discover a few things. The first thing I see is, verse 21, Thou shalt call his name singular, personal. Verse 23, They shalt call his name plural, the masses. Okay? The, th the second thing I see in this is in uh, these two verses is verse 21 what he is and his purpose what he is and his purpose and in 23 we see who he is verse 21 what he is it's in the Hebrew name Yeshua what he is is Messiah meaning the anointed king that sits on David's throne in the city of David. And we covered that two days ago. A day ago? Two days ago? A day or two ago? He is also salvation. You, he will save his people. Yeshua means salvation. He is rescue. He is deliverance. He is wholeness in peace with God. He is atonement. Atone is a simple compound word that means at one. So it, it, uh, atonement is very much a New Testament word because you're at one meant with God. You are made at one with God in the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? Praise God. That is what he is. When you declare the name Jesus, Yeshua, you are declaring he is your king and your salvation. Verse 23 now tells us who this king and salvation is. He is Emmanuel. God who walks and lives among his people. Or better put, walks, lives, exists at one with his people. And in both verses, we see the purpose of his coming, which is what we have been celebrating this week, at this time of the year. And I see an arrow to turn the page. So that is what we've been celebrating this time of the year. Both of those verses, what he is, his position, he is king, he is salvation, his position is sitting on the throne, he is the one sitting in charge, and the who of what he is, he is Emmanuel, God, who walks, lives, exists at one with his people. Again, Merry Christmas, y'all. I love you. God bless you. And I'll see you next time.